Miss Naimatul Wardia, you may have the floor now. And for everyone who needs uh, interpretation, uh, please uh, go to English channel. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa syukurillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, ala zila nabi abangna, minal aidin wal faizin, laqa malallahu minna wa minna. God bless us all. The Honorable, all of the parties that we cannot mention one by one, whether from Indonesia or from other countries. So thank you very much for the opportunity. And I do really hope that this relationship is bring benefit from all of us, especially us from the fresh market of Sambalagi, Jakarta. My name is Naimatul Wardia. I am as the head of cooperative from Sambilagi Market, Yogyakarta. Our market is a traditional market located in Solo, Sambilagi, Sleman District, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And thank God, the Sambilagi Market has been established. I'm very sorry, seems like there is a connections problem. Okay, so we have a several time of um, changing in the market. And now we have a lot of customer in the market, but then the situations change after the COVID-19 stride when our market facing a lot of changing, there's no customer coming in. And especially in Jogjakarta, there was a lockdown and then nobody should be able to go out and there shouldn't be a gathering so that there's a severe decline in our income. And also since the airport, where previously the airport is nearby the our market, now the airport has been relocated to other places. So, but then we are as the street vendor, we cannot just stand still. And that's why we keep striving, we keep doing our activities so that we can relieve our fresh market to do our activities by doing several activities. And we have a cooperations with several instances with the uh, trade agency of Sleman district. We are doing an online shopping where the customer able to shop online without really have to go to the market so that is the form of partnership that we've been doing. And also we are working together with another agency who makes us a Sambiligi ID. And then here we do expect that the customer could shop at our small vendors to do online shopping without really have to go to the traditional market. So Pasar ID is a program that is cooperated with Merchubuana University. And when we try to promote our products and they are ready to help us and support us and our activities in Sambalagi market, we need to maintain the health protocol because as we know that the pandemic is still ongoing right now. And then before we are entered the market, we, are, we need to use masks, face masks. We have to keep our distance and then we have to use hand sanitizer. And also there is a temperature checking before they went, they enter into the market. So that is the health protocol. And there's also uh, people who are taking turns from the market who is become the officer or the one who is a uh, guarding uh, at the entrance of the market. And then apart from that, 
we need to continue our activities by applying health protocol. And then after that, thank God, after the online market and then the shifting of the online program, and we are able to continue our activities. And also in that terms, we need to highlight that we always need to do a prevention actions for COVID-19 spread. And we also have a lucky draw so that our expectations by providing this lucky draw is that people who are living around the market still have a willingness to go to the market so that they are motivated because they is a there is a lucky draw. So I am as one of the uh, active member on the religious com community, I'm trying to socialize or I'm trained or giving information to the community that when you obeying the health protocol is a must, it's a mandate that is one of our anticipations of spreading the COVID-19. We have to use masks at all times, washing our hands and then keep our distance and then avoid the uh, get people's gathering. So when people go to the market, if all of the process is fulfilled by the customer and then after that we can shop safely And then apart from that, we also have a partnership with uh, PLN or State Electricity Company and also the police and military and Air Force to create us a wash machine on the entrance of the market. So due to those reasons, we have an expectation so that we can keep our markets to be sterile. And apart from that, we also have a competitions of healthy market so that the customer feel enthusiastic to come to the market. So the customer doesn't need to worry about the health protocol because we have implemented all that. And then we also have another activity. There is an online karaoke competitions. And then it entertained us as the, the uh, hawkers and the, as the street vendors so that we're not stuck. And then we can entertain ourselves by doing the online karaoke competition so that we're not stressed out because we cannot avoid this. We cannot avoid the pandemic so that we have to stay entertained. And then also last week we held a vaccine event uh, where the street vendors and the hawkers were vaccinated together. And then it is also presented by the regent of Sleman to give us a spirit and motivations so that we are resistant from this uh, COVID-19. And then our expectations is that with this virt shifting to the virtual or online process, our expectations is that there will be more people knowing about our market and there's nothing to be scared of because we're always obey and comply to the health protocol and then the people can come to the market safely. And then we are from Sambiligi Jogjakarta Market, we have a yell yell. If you're happy, you can come to Sambiligi Market because in Sambiligi Market, because we apply the health protocol. This is a singing or a yell yell created by the street vendors and hawkers in Sambilegi Market. Sambilegi Market is ready to be vaccinated. 
I do really hope that with facts and with all of the health protocol procedure, and especially the Sambilgi market to be always exist and we'll still be able to serve the community so that we can survive and also to add our income for those who depend their livelihood in Sambilgi market. And this is a drive and a driver for us. It's a motivation for us, especially during the pandemic, how we can survive for the life of our family. That's all that I can tell you. If there is any other opportunities, we can meet again in the near future. That's all. Thank you very much. May God bless us all. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Naimatul. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, I, this shows like um, the stress. It's not just health issue for the workers uh, in the market, but also the stress because of the conditions they have to face where the customers decline, their income decline. And also I think uh, what uh, Ms. Naimatul just shared um, is is not happening in many other countries where where market traders have been vaccinated. So there are of course these um, different challenges in different countries where situations might not be as well as what Ms. Naimatul is saying. So uh, we would also uh, like to invite Mr. Supakorn Kitkanakorn from uh, Bangkok uh, Market in Thailand to share the experience of the situations in, in Thailand. And also uh, if you have, uh, you can have the floor now, uh, Mr. Supakorn. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you um, for joining. I operate uh, Kanom Meat Market right in Bangkok. And it's surrounded by, um, communities about 200,000 people and we are about considered medium to large size market with about 1,000 vendors. Uh, on average, we would have about 10,000 customers in our market every day. And during this um, COVID crisis, there has been so many good and bad experience. I'm sure everyone in this um, meetings would agree. Um, like other fresh markets, we have faced um, the problems of panics, not only be, not only by the, um, the customers, but also by the, our vendors and the lack of uh, preparation that we 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 have so during the first few months um, we faced um, shortage of goods when the government announced um, lockdown. It takes about a week or two to put things back to normal, and um, luckily we do not have that problems for the second and third wave. Of COVID. Right now we are in the third wave and uh, um, Mr. Supercorn, I think your connections to a few markets in Bangkok. There's one market in the in the center of Bangkok that has been open and closed for five times already. Um, so what we do as a fresh market operator, we have the Thai Fresh Market Association. Um, two days ago, we have a press release asking the government to issue or to provide vaccines to um, 
vendors and everyone in the fresh market as priority to prevent the, the widespread of COVID-19 because they close the school and they work from home and they even close down restaurants, not, not allow people to sit and eat. But fresh market has to stay open because everyone still have to eat. Even, even they close down the restaurants, not, not to allow people to sit and eat, they still, the restaurants would still have to uh, come and buy fresh food from market. And with, without proper vaccination, it's almost impossible to prevent the, the widespread of the, the COVID. Uh, disease. So this is what we we do in big picture. But in terms of of individual market, um, we have uh, to reduce um, the entrance into the market. Uh, we have to set up checkpoints, um, measure temperature. Um, we have to work closely with um, with our vendors in terms of. Um, um, new protocols in order to, pre to prevent widespread of uh, the COVID. We have to uh, set up um, a lot of small groups um, of, of, of vendors to, as a, to work as a team and do our best not to, uh, not to be closed. Um, on January, my market was closed for five days because we found one infected person. And um, and uh, it was not it was not pretty. Um, um, and when we reopen the market again, it really takes a lot of energy and power of everyone to to push the market back into the full motion again. And um, six months has passed. We still have only seventy percent of customers back. Um, but there is um, there's also a good side that we, we find that um, because of this crisis, there are better awareness in terms of importance of cleanliness. We can enforce rules and regulations and protocols that we could not be able to enforce uh, before during the normal time. For example, simple and common sense that customers should not bring pets into the fresh market. Before the COVID time, it was impossible. We had fight almost every day of people, you know, holding their little puppies into the fresh market because they considered it's not a pet, but it's a family to them. <laughs> so that was impossible before COVID, but now, um, it's just one of those things that uh, is clear. Um, in terms of vendors, um, also, it was, it was very hard for us to ask them to put their mask on uh, when, they fell, when they sell ready to eat food or even when, they, when, they sell, uh, when they're cooking in, in their own stall. It was hard for them to understand the importance of um, personal hygiene. <laughs> um, and the last thing that, that I find that is very, very uh, intriguing is that during this crisis, it's kind of forced everyone in the market to work together in order to survive. It has, we have never been working so close to our vendors before, and it creates a very strong team now that I am sure that uh, will be able to get us through this crisis. So um, my, my, my opinion in order to share is that um, how will we prepare ourselves and our team is probably the best vaccine for the next pandemic and even for the next upcoming disruptions. And how, how, how will you situate yourself in your local communities? Um, I think that that is the key because if you can build trust and um, stay strong with your communities, they will always come back to you. That's what, that's what my idea. Thank you.
Thank you, Mrs. Supercorn. As you said that every single day of lockdown, it means the loss of basic income, right? For the traders. Can you um, share if uh, the economic impact of uh, what happened the past year to the traders in, in your market? Just to elaborate a little. Yeah, um, my market, um, mostly about 70% would be sellers who uh, sell fresh fruits. Uh, fresh meat, um, ready to eat food. About 30% would be selling shoes, clothes, cell phones. Um, for those who are selling uh, fresh produce and ready to eat food, they would be not as much affected. I would say in some cases would even be um, making more money because people are afraid of you know, to go shopping into, uh, into, into big, big uh, shopping malls or community malls or even at restaurants. They would rather buy fresh produce and cook themselves. Um, but on the other side, vendors who sell shoes, shirts, cell phones, or I would say non-essential products, a lot of them have gone bankrupt and out of business. So there are a lot of turnover in this uh, categories. When, of course, when the market is closed, everyone has no income and, and uh, even more, um, a lot of them have, have um, extra expenses to go and pay for clinics or hospitals to check up to get the clean bill of health. Um, that adds a lot of expenses to the vendors who are already in in deep trouble. Thank you. I think that that situations really um, highlight how the imbalance that that sort of happened, the impact of the economy to the fresh market. While on the other side, uh, we see report of how big retails are actually profiting so much during the past uh, year of the pandemic. Even some of the biggest online um, e-commerce companies are getting, you know, billions of U.S. dollars from online tradings. Um, it is really a, 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 a bad conditions of how the regulations doesn't go, you know, doesn't, you know is not balanced between the fresh market and the big retails uh, often. Um, and uh, just to uh, ask quickly to Ms. Uh, Kingcorn, uh, if you can uh, explain a little bit on this different policies that happen between the fresh market and the convenience stores, if you can, can add a little uh, points to that, uh, Ms. Ms. Kingcorn. Mm -hmm. You can unmute me. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kartini. I mean, I speak in Thai. Yes. Um, okay. Um, แต่ละช่วงของของโควิด For each uh, period of a uh, COVID pandemic. How, how should I switch off the translator? It's onto. Sorry, you, you have to close the interpretation when you speak. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, at the in the first lockdown, it's not so clear the impact, but for the second uh, period, uh, our survey showed that uh, about seven uh, markets were closed for one week to two weeks. So these are the markets where some people were found to have COVID uh, and uh, the, the government closes the markets for three days, seven days, or some of them uh, who are, which are clusters, they may actually a, a hot cluster that means a lot of COVID uh, infection. So they will be closed for more than that, more than one week. And then for the green market, where farm, farmers market, where, where farmers sell their produce directly to the, the customers, these are closed, were, were closed for like two weeks, three weeks. 
uh, and this uh, uh, the impact of course is on the consumers as well as the farmers the farmers who are selling their produce every day uh, so you can see that there is a difference uh, shopping malls are closed only for three hours up to 48 hours each time uh, even though uh, some covid infection was found so that but but they, there are a different kind of schedule for closure three hours to 48 hours only uh, what's more interesting is that convenience stores the large chain uh, uh there are a number of a large number of them in thailand uh they the uh the, it seems that they have not detected any covid patients or covid uh infected uh, customers uh so i'm wondering uh why why that is the case so that's all i want to add about the different dif different uh measures that are being uh uh, imposed on the uh, small uh, uh, retailers uh, and the others uh, on supermarkets. So, for people who have who who actually have whose livelihoods are related to these markets, now actually there are twenty times the the numbers of people employed in shopping malls and supermarkets there are 20 times more people involved in these types of markets, in our types of markets. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Supercorn and uh, Kay for giving the context in, in, in Thailand. Um, and it is true that uh, the, the traders in the fresh market are some of the, the biggest uh, workforce in countries like Indonesia, Thailand and India after agriculture because of this really absorb a lot of working uh, workforce um, and it's often not seeing as important part of the economy uh, unfortunately um, and i will would like to um, invite mr darmendra kumar from hawkers joint action committee india uh, one of the worst countries affected by COVID right now is india uh, also one of the worst lockdown measures that happened um, in the, the last year so maybe you can uh, share um, situations in India how and how it impact the, the street vendors and, and the local market. Go ahead. Thank you, Kartini. Uh, good morning, good afternoon uh, to all the participants. Uh, we all know that the street vendors or hawkers are backbone of the supply chain. On the one hand, hawkers provide markets to small farmers and micro and small manufacturers and on the other hand support urban poor survive in cities uh, we must note that uh, india is still largely a country of farmers uh, and 86.2 percent of the indian farmers are either marginal or small if we look at the micro small and medium enterprise in india the number as per the latest figure, goes up to 63.4 million and 99.5 million of micro, small and medium enterprises fall into the micro categories, employing over 110 million people. So whether it's number of farmers or numbers of people doing small manufacturing, it's so huge in Indian uh, context. Uh, with, uh, uh, we look at the figures of informal economy or informal workers. Uh, we have approximately 95% of India's workforce working in the informal or unorganized sector. And among these, 64% uh, workers work as self-employed. And street vending is one of the major self-employed category. The COVID-19 pandemic and a strict national lockdown uh, enforced on 24th March 2020 uh, with only four hours notice had a severe impact on majority of street vendors. The lockdown resulted in a sudden absolute drop in work 
and income for almost all street vendors, while easing of lockdown restrictions allowed for the gradual resumption of economic activity, street vendors remained in crisis with reductions in earnings, increased debt, a rise in care responsibilities, and little or no access to long-term support, making recovery slow and difficult. Uh, we had our street markets, wet markets, closed much before the lockdown was imposed uh, on 24th March of 2020. And few markets, uh, 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 like weekly markets that we have uh, in India, in almost every city, and particularly in Delhi, uh, weekly markets were not allowed to operate uh, until 2020 October. So we had a larger, bigger uh, period of lockdown uh, exclusively for street vendors. The national lockdown resulted uh, in near total loss of livelihood, uh, I must say. Since lockdown was lifted uh, somehow, uh, somewhere in June and July, some work had resumed, but earnings had not recovered. Uh, with easing of lockdown restrictions in June and July. Uh, the customer uh, footfall was not as it used to be before the lockdown. So some workers were able to go back to work, but without the same level of income, or sales or you know, uh, profit. Even those who were able to work, the quantity of work was reduced dramatically. They were working fewer days per week than they were before the crisis. The earning of street vendors had fallen drastically from pre-lockdown averages. Many street vendors reported experiencing hunger during the months of lockdown. Uh, during the crisis, informal workers, uh, particularly street vendors, had to adopt a range of coping mechanisms, such as drawing down their savings, borrowing money at predatory rates, finding other work, and faced with loss of work and earning, drawing down saving was the most common coping mechanism used by street vendors. Street vending activity, both food and non-food, almost completely ceased during the lockdown months and due to the severe restrictions on use of public space and closure of markets. Even vendors selling vegetables and fruits and other essential goods faced harassment from the police when they ventured out and they were also not able to find customers as before because the streets were empty. Even later, as the unlock guidelines came into force, as I mentioned, weekly markets uh, were not allowed to reopen. Hawker's Joint Action Committee had to work with uh, designers, architects, and prepare a COVID-appropriate market plan and advocate with the local authorities. And somehow we got uh, them uh, restarted, but only at the end of 2020. While resuming work in the streets uh, by the end of uh, last year, uh, street vendors faced many uh, barriers, including harassment, eviction, and there was a uh, lack of working capital. Uh, we, uh, through our studies, uh, done with uh, many other organizations uh, also sometimes, uh, found that both food and non-food vendors uh, were seeming uh, saying similar trajectories in terms of loss of work and earning. As you must be uh, knowing that most street vendors are migrants and uh, undocumented. So whatever social assistance in the form of food or cash were provided by uh, central government or in some cases uh, state government uh, uh, failed to reach to majority of street vendors. We had few states uh, which supported with cash transfer, uh, but the amount of cash transfer was very uh, meager and uh, it was never sufficient. One major scheme that I must mention here was uh, brought up by the central government to provide uh, 
credit uh, as a working capital of rupees 10,000 to street vendors, and that was launched on 1st June 2020 uh, in the name of uh, Prime Minister Street Vendors, Atman Nirvar Nidhi. So, but this scheme also had its uh, limitations. Uh, it was uh, only online, so there was no offline process available for street vendors. The other major limitation that we had or still have of this scheme is that only those street vendors who had been surveyed or who had been counted, documented by the municipal bodies uh, were eligible to apply under this scheme for a credit of 10,000 rupees. And the experience that we have uh, of documenting, uh, enumerating the street vendors in India across cities throughout India uh, is very uh, controversial, I would say. The number of street vendors uh, where enumeration of all existing street vendors has been completed are gross underestimation and points to exclusionary practices. Uh, it's no wonder uh, most surveys have been conducted contravening to the Street Vendors Act and without the supervision of town vending committees having mandated elected representative of the street vendors. So majority of the street vendors have been excluded from the survey and that's why they fail to uh, profit or fail to access benefits from social assistance schemes uh, provided by the or launched by the central state governments. On the other hand, uh, we saw that uh, the online commerce uh, was never disallowed. Uh, but in fact, we had uh, policy frameworks to facilitate that. Uh, and, and, and that's why it's uh, on the one hand, state vendors suffered badly. And uh, on the other hand, it was e-commerce uh, businesses like Amazon, uh, who in fact benefited out of this crisis. And we also saw some initiatives taken by companies like Amazon. Like, for example, I would mention Amazon started during the lockdown uh, in one of uh, Indian city, Pune, uh, farm to door step delivery of fruits and vegetables. Uh, and the, Largest Indian industry, uh, Reliance, they, they had uh, a telecommunication uh, network uh, in the name of Jio. So Jio partnered with Facebook and Google uh, to compete with uh, Amazon. Uh, similarly, the largest uh, physical retailer of the world, Walmart, we all uh, know about Walmart. They have tied up with Flip, Indian largest e-commerce player, Flipkart. So we have all industries coming together, you know, under certain uh, consortiums uh, to uh, reach out the benefits from the crisis. So uh, I think I must stop here. But at the end, uh, I would just like to uh, say that uh, we must uh, think of uh, uh, countering. Uh, mega international retailers and their consortiums and we should also think of getting public support uh, particularly policy support for street vendors joining and uh, taking benefits of technology like e-commerce so there is a lot to think about a lot to do for street vendors i must stop here thank you Gartini. Thank you very much, Dharmendra. I think it also sort of contrasts what Mr. Superkorn was said in the beginning that, um, you know, this, this fresh market has uh, a social um, value as well, the way it connects, um, you know, with communities around it. And what you just also said, Dharmendra, that it's actually sort of you know, many of this e-commerce coming in into village and without knowing, you know, the situations and start, uh, you know, buying up a lot of um, the fresh and fruit vegetables um, and selling it with, with price that we cannot control actually right now, because yeah. I remember even in Indonesia, when, when the pandemic starts, the, the price of, of 
products that are sold in the in the online is very uh, it increase um, exponentially. It's it's un uncontrollable because there's at that time there's a panic buying also, especially in the big cities where people are trying to fill their kitchen, their pantries, uh, and they will buy everything. So it's it's something that. It shows also how communities are often affected with this um, with this increase of, of, of um, industry like online uh, like e-commerce. Um, I would uh, like to open the, the floor for more comments. Like if people want to share their experience and stories, um, but. Um, before that, we also have uh, Ms. Nash Tismans from Streetmat International. I was wondering if uh, Nash, if you would like to share a little bit of, of um, uh, situations from Streetmat members or affiliates um, on the situations the past year um, before, uh, you know, if, if others would like to, to make comments. Uh, thank you, Kartini. It's so wonderful to receive this invitation from you and to join all of you and hear these stories of um, the different street and uh, food vendors in Asia. Um, we at StreetNet definitely understand what you're going through because it's also uh, the, the situation that our affiliates uh, have been reporting to us throughout this year and throughout this period of the pandemic. Um, and so, as the previous speakers mentioned, it was really very challenging to have um, this, the, the income. So we have less income for our, for our workers. And then to continue to have the harassment in some of the areas where our workers are, and to also have situations where they cannot access the assistance that they need because they're either undocumented or they're not recognized. Um, I, I think the biggest problem that we've seen so far in StreetNet, and, and in Asia we work um, with, we, we work in Cambodia and in Bangladesh, also in Nepal and in India, and we have a few projects as well in Vietnam and Laos. Uh, so, so in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, we're trying to look into food security issues as well, um, because because this is we're beginning to see how the closure of markets is really an issue for for our vendors. And you know, it doesn't matter if you sell food or non-food items. The fact is, if they close the markets, you don't have a space to sell. And a lot of our affiliates are also criminalized because um, they're seen as a nuisance, which is also something that we need to change. Um, but I think what's been striking for, for me listening to our affiliates is that uh, a lot of the street vendors have become essential workers during this pandemic. But unfortunately, they have not been treated as essential. So looking now at vaccination campaigns um, and how they're structured, you see, I, I wonder often at which point street vendors will be given vaccines. Um, and, it, and it's particularly striking for me because I remember when the pandemic started, the, the, myth, the misconception was that it was street vendors who were spreading um, COVID, but actually it was not the case. Um, and, and, you know, our, our street vendors had to risk um, sickness because they needed to work and there was no support for that. Um, we also noticed that recognition still hasn't changed in terms of organizing, I mean, in terms of uh, the organizers of street vendors. So street vendors associations are still not treated um, in, in equal level as say uh, a trade union in a country. And that's a big problem, particularly when it comes to um, drafting policies, because that means that um, 
we are not included in the dis in the policy discussion and in streetnet we have a saying nothing for us without us um, and it's something i also want to emphasize today as we as we talk about our experiences and our challenges that we also have to fight for the spaces um, that, that we need to occupy because we because our issues ought to be reflected in the kinds of policies that are that the, the different governments and different institutions draft and it should not be drafted for us but we should be included in the drafting of these policies which is why I'm also uh, I, I was initially very impressed at the case of India where they have these uh, town vending uh, committees where they have the law but again it's a question of implementation you already have the system but um, but it's but it's not being utilized to really represent uh, street vendors and finally uh, I think it's also important to stress uh, the experience of women street vendors in particular uh, for us we've noticed that um, most of the street vendors, it, it's still, it, it's difficult to say that a lot of the street vendors are women because in Asia, I think uh, majority are still men. But the, the reason why we bring up um, the women's experience is because of their unpaid labor, which has just been surfaced and during this pandemic, which means that not only do they have to work to provide an income for their families, but they're also doing care work at home. And that care work is not just raising the children, but when, when people in the communities get sick, it's usually they who are called upon to, uh, to support their communities. Um, so it's also important that we look at this kind of disproportionate effect on women. And finally, uh, just to echo what's already been said about vaccination, I think it's great that uh, Grain, um, Biothai, and our other co-organizers uh, have brought us here together because in the short term, I think we really need to come together as a region um, and, and force our governments, force uh, the public to listen to us uh, we're a big we're a big force to be reckoned with. So I, I offer solidarity and encouragement to everyone here. Um, but we must fight for vaccination because another thing that we're trying to stress in Streetnet is that economic recovery cannot happen if we are not uh, recognized in the informal economy because we are part of the economy. So I hope we also get to fight for vaccination. Thank you. Thank you, Kartini. Thank you very much, Nash. I think that last point is, is really important because many of, of the street vendors are often seen as informal, especially also um, in the also in the fresh market in the in the big cities, where many of them comes from rural areas, many of them comes from, uh, you know, uh, other places where they don't have the identity card of that area, and that often creates problems when vaccinations oblige, you know, uh, that you you bring your identity card, uh, and then many of of these informal workers are are not counted. Um, uh, even though they are often see as essential, I think what you said in the beginning, you know, uh, being essential workers but not treated as essentials is often the, the experience of the fresh market and street vendors. Um, I would like to open the floor uh, if anyone wants to make any comments uh, or sharing experience, you can raise your hand. Um, um, maybe uh, Vitun from Biota, you want to say something uh, to everyone here to share uh, some thoughts on, on the work that Biota is, is doing uh, on the issue. Or any other who wants to make uh, 
our sharing experience very much welcome uh, because this is a space for us to exchange ideas, experience, I think learning from, from each other's in different situations. Uh, you can always raise your hands. Uh, anyone wants to share? Don't be shy. <laughs> this is a safe space for everyone to talk. Uh, uh, I don't see hands raising. Um, okay. Um, who's this? We see one person. Uh, so if if. Uh, terima kasih atas ah, waktunya. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Dari pasar Sambilegi. So I am from Sambilegi Market. Thank you for the time. Halo. Alhamdulillah uh, sebelum terjadinya pandemi. So before pandemic of COVID-19 happened, we are in Sambilegi Market. We already have the healthy market. And from there, we have an experience and we found out that health is very important. And especially for us as the market organizer or the street vendors or as the hawkers. And then working together with many parties, thank God our market, especially Sambilgi market since 2013, we have worked together with the centers of people's economy of Gajah Mada University about how to create our market to become a healthy market before it become a clean market. Because as we know that due to the era development, the clean market has been spread everywhere. And that's why even though that we are a traditional market, we need to be able to maintain our environment, our clean and healthy environment. We also work together with the, uh, the monitoring agency of food and medicines. So where they check the uh, dangerous substance that is contained on food product. And then we were once uh, become the first winner of the competitions from market who is free from dangerous uh, substance like borax, formalin, and so on and so forth. So the product that we sell in the market, it is guaranteed that we are selling the healthy product. So even though that we are strike with this pandemic, it's not a problem anymore for us to maintain the health and clean environment in the market. And we also work together with the primary health care how to maintain with if there's a problem when there's a of small vendors or the street vendors who are sick. So we can guarantee you that our market is fresh and then cleaned and then healthy. And then another activities is that we have a mast uh, activities of aerobatic uh, activities on the market so that we can maintain our health. Everyone who come to the markets are comfortable. So that is the uh, precautions actions that we did. We're also taking a few days leave so that the because our market was sterilized at that time. So it will ensure the communities that the traditional market, there's nothing need to be worried about because we are keeping our health protocol and that's one of our way to cut the ties from the spread of COVID-19. 
But then back again, the ability of customer buying product is declining. So it still become a challenge for us. So we are up until now, we're still doing a lot of measure to create and to ensure the community to shop in the traditional market. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nemato, for adding that point. I think uh, just to remind everyone, when we start, uh, when the pandemic happened, it was the first, uh, it was fresh market, a wet market that was really directly blamed uh, of spreading of causing COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and then, of course, um, over the past year, scientists have, in the last year, uh, proved it is not true. But still, again, a fresh market or wet markets are often um, seeing as bad things compared to, you know, this clean uh, convenience Hello. stores or supermarket. Um, so uh, I'm giving Mr. Asit, you want to speak? You want to say something? Go ahead. Hello, madam. Yes. Uh, I'm from India, Kolkata. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Go I ahead. am the leader of National Hawker Federations, and also now I am just uh, joining with the Hawker's uh, Joint Action Committee from Delhi. Yes, Mr. Asit, pleasure. You can, if you want to share and make comments on this point of how it is. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. today's today's uh, meeting mini, uh, minutes I don't know. So if you have a um, just. Uh, uh, just a reply or uh, re uh, repeat the topic, then I will talk about these matter. Okay, so uh, the we are in the sessions of sharing on how impact of COVID-19 restrictions to the fresh market and street vendors in different countries in yeah. Asia. Uh, if you want to share um, the situations with members of the uh, from National Hawkers Federations. Actually, my uh, my designation is my, I am Asit Shah from Kolkata, India, uh, India, and my own union have a mm -hmm. own union, uh, Central Kolkata Shwait Khudirambos Hawkers Welfare Association that is government registered. Number two, this the today's is a topic on the COVID nineteen effect on the hawkers matters uh, in uh, Asia and also in our India is very much because uh, the affected areas today's uh, lockdown due to lockdown the hawkers rights and hawkers earning matters has has been stopped by our government which they are not taking any uh, upper hand uh, beneficiary uh, helping hand beneficiary for uh, in support of uh, hawkers uh, we demand from to the government of india immediately to realize uh, release the monthly 6,000 rupees for uh, poor hawkers rehabilitations and also uh, vaccinations facility and medical facility through their uh, schemes. Hello. Hello, yes. Uh, and also we demand uh, uh, government to implement the National Hawkers Act, which was passed on 2014. And by that act, uh, they will uh, they they will automatically covered under the scheme of uh, beneficiary scheme of central government but uh, till today the government didn't get, um, didn't any uh, uh, take the step uh, regarding this act uh, so we are very very much very much worried about our sports hawkers who daily earn minimum uh, earning amount which now stop due to lockdown Mm -hmm. mm. Hello. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I, it is something that I think the call to vaccines for all the street vendors at local market should be something that groups in in the regions also calling to demand that I think in many places it should be the priority because uh, fresh market and street vendors are really a uh, help uh connecting you know delivering foods for for households and families so that that is something that it's very important thank you mr asit saha uh i will go to Vitun from thailand uh he's raising his hand um 
Go ahead, Vitun. Mr. Asid Saha, I will turn the... Vitun, we cannot hear you. Um, Hello. Yes, now I'm turning the microphone to Vitun from Thailand. We we can't we still can't hear you. So um, maybe while we wait for Vitun, if anyone else want to make a comment and then we can go back to Vitun once he's able to connect to the audio. So if not, actually, we are going to the second session because I think in the first we've heard, we've heard a lot of uh, also similarities um, on, on the what's being what what is needed is really a support for for this is uh, for this essential workers, the fresh market and also experience that have been shared. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we okay. do. Yes, no. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, I, I have a question uh, to Supercon and, and, and our friends from India, in the cities. So, I'm uh, really proud that. Uh, that uh, unfair uh, measure uh, from the government leasing fresh market uh, and, 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 and compare, compared to the uh, modern trade. Uh, and, but, but I would like to know that uh, uh, how it is uh, what was the, what's the future of, of this uh, uh, unfair uh, or uh, injustice about this, and how we can uh, uh, develop uh, to 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 improve this situation? Uh? Okay. Okay. Maybe we could on first, uh, and, and and our friend from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vitun. Uh, Mr. Supercorn, if maybe you want to make a comments to the questions from Vitun uh, about this uh, unfair um, regulations differences between fresh market and then uh, retail chain. Um, what what is net needed to do? That's actually also maybe part of our second sessions on way to adapt and move forward. But Mr. Supercorn, you want to answer that quickly? Is Mr. Supercorn is still here with us. Ah, yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I support what uh, Ms. King Khan mentioned that in Thailand, it's, it is very surprising that a lot of COVID cases 
have never been detected in shop uh, convenience store as as much as in fresh market or anywhere else. Um, for some reason, very hardly you can find them in the timelines that people uh, forward around. Um, and when they do, when they do detect COVID uh, patients in, in their premises, they would only close for a few hours, um, maybe overnight to clean. But for fresh market, um, we have to close five days, three days at least. Um, even though we are open air market, but uh, in shopping malls, they are all air conditioning. I don't know how they do that. And it's always been on, in the topics of uh, people discussing around. Um, so that, that is unfair and unhealthy. Um, but there's a lot of people talked about it. The government doesn't do anything to change that. Um, so we just have to keep talking. And, um, and the vaccination is, in my opinion, is the key to, to, to have as many people in fresh market be vaccinated um, in order to, to move things forward for fresh market and um, food vendors, street vendors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Supercorn. Um, so our second session is linked to that, is way to adapt and move forward. Um, and I think we've heard uh, several suggestions also sharing experience on, you know, like for example, in Sambilagi in Jogja, because of the cooperative of the market, they can get vaccinated. But what happened if you don't have cooperatives, if you are not, you have a union in your market or as, as a street vendors, you know? So those are some questions maybe we can try to reflect or sharings uh, in this next sessions. And uh, like the first one, we I would like to invite some of the initial speakers to share um, their uh, ideas, and then we can have a uh, floor for comments and questions. Um, uh, Miss, uh, I see some uh, hands are raising, but can, uh, I would like to ask if you uh, hold that, and then we can go in the open discussions later on. So first, I want to invite um, King Korn again, okay, uh, from uh, Thailand to share uh, of, um, ideas of way to adapt and, and, and move forward. Um, okay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kourtney. I think it's become interesting discussion in, in terms of strategy, how to tackle the unjust treatment between the fresh market to, to fresh market and also the big company or, or the shopping mall of modern trade for this, uh, my name. Um, last year, I, I, I would like to go back a little bit of the background information that last a uh, few months ago, Biotai have done some kind of survey with the, with the uh, university to survey the, the roles and the status and the convenient a com, com, opinion from consumer to fresh market around seven markets or throughout Thailand. And we found out very interesting, even the figure before showing, showing that uh, Thai, Thai customer, Thai consumer relying uh, buying food from modern trade more and more, but still the market, fresh market, and also the weekly, monthly, or even the farmers markets still being very important in terms of food distribution through our country. Oh, also in Bangkok, the fresh market still remain very important as the social venue and also food disseminate a food distribution platform to, to different uh, level of income people. And also, interestingly, we found that the age, we have assumption that uh, more kind of elder people go to fresh market more than um, modern trade. But it's not true from the survey show out the number that more than around 60% at average 
the, the average age of people who go into fresh market still 25 to 40 years old, interestingly, but um, unexpectedly more women than, than men. So I think this is really important and found out that the fresh market have a lot improvement in terms of hygiene, in terms of uh, management and, and how to say, work, working together. I think that the, the, the manager of the market or the owner of the market has been working uh, closely, have a good relationship with the, with the vendors in the market. In particular, the COVID time, that um, it's true that Kun Supergon mentioned that the relationship and cooperation between the, the market's owner and the street, uh, the traders in the market become stronger and um, moving towards kind of positive approach. And that's a, that's a hope that, that we can have, uh, how to say, hope to, 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 to be more organized, to organize the cooperation between within the markets, it's each particular market and also between each market as the association. And in Thailand, they have already the association. I think they've become using this, this, um, this association more in terms of organizing and come up with the demand to the government. And also I think the, the issues on prioritizing the street vendors and then food vendors as the special uh, important important community of important person to distribute food and and provide food access to to broad populations should be prioritized to be vaccinated i think this is very also important issue but come back to the to the issue that how could we tackle the unjust treatment by the government. I think this is a big structure, structural issues in, in, in many issues related food system. We know that most of the, most of the government policies geared toward to support the benefit of the big company rather than, rather than the small uh, farmers as always. I think this is time that I think Given that situation, given that we saw more obvious that is unjust treatment to promote the role of the small people, small farmers, small traders to provide food for broader, cheaper, better, and fair economic justice. I think this is, this is a very, very clear time that we need to come up with some proposal and demand that is how we can pay more important to, to, to this group who provide food, half of, half of the market, let's say. It's still in hand of the small traders, small producers. Um, so this is half half. So we need to, we need to come up with the, with the balance policy to promote. And on the other hand, I think the, the, the public uh, education and, and popular media need to be done more in terms of give important to to get people see that importance of the fresh market, in, important of the even weekly market, and important of the street vendor to provide food. I think we need to promote the roles of these people more and show the existing and how they are so important in the normal time and also in the very crisis time. And one important thing that we, we, we found out from the survey last few months is that mainly fresh market provide food, not so far, five to 10 kilometers. Customer come, come to the fresh market in particular fresh market, meaning the scatterness of all these market, wet market is really important when people can't commute. So, so this is a very important role of this, of this wet market and weekly market that we have to promote more and pay more attention to is important and, and raise up their role and raise up their, um, how to say, uh, presence more. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Kay. I think that's very clear. And also it is it is more resilient, actually, the fresh markets in terms of, of supporting rural communities as well as providing and linking food for the urban communities. Because uh, as we see with the pandemic, how you know border uh, countries border are being closed. So countries who rely too much on export are really suffering, actually. Um, and that force industry um you know force government to issue the um, policies that allowing uh, industry that continue exporting food to operates with the you know the uh, taking the toll of the workers you know we see cases how workers in in the in industry food industry are suffering a lot last year because they are forced to continue working with uh, very um unhealthy conditions um, and uh, second, I would like, uh, because this is something that uh, I think Darmendra has already mentioned, how, you know, many of the migrant workers, uh, uh, many of the street vendors are migrants from other cities and places. And what we can do to support that kind of situations, um, I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Santi uh, Snigda Mohanti, also from Hawkers Joint Action Committee, um, to uh to share um what uh hawkers joint action committee uh proposed on on, on this uh on this particular topic hello hello good afternoon hello. good afternoon hello good afternoon yes. i'm yes. Uh, Sandy, uh, representing the hawkers joint action committee i think this is the second session and we have already discussed a lot about the impact of pandemic on street vendors, farmers. And I think I should now discuss about the roadmap way forward and how to resolve the issues which were raised before us. Uh, the livelihood of the street vendors has been uh, that atau, uh, so uh, pandemic induced lockdown. Uh, under this condition, it is imperative to discuss a roadmap considering the condition of the street vendors or the marginal farmers. I believe that it will be helpful in bringing some positive changes in their situation, which is miserable now. Uh, I think uh, that a roadmap for the transformation could be conceived primarily focusing on three subjects. First one is work security, second social security, and monetary and other health. Uh, we are talking about monetary and other health because there is no denying that the financial condition of the vendors have become worse in last one year due to pandemic and pandemic induced lockdown. Uh, they depend on their daily earnings for living. However, the pandemic and lockdown in the wake of pandemic have pushed the street vendors to such uh, condition where they cannot come out and restart their business without financial support. Uh, uh, let me bring to a notice about the condition of Sukarpun Jewish seller. Uh, we can take it as an example of condition of the street vendors due to lockdown. The sugarcane juice seller generally uh, procure sugarcane in bulk before advent of tough summer and they sell the juice by crushing it along the road throughout the summer season. However, the uh, Juice seller procure sugarcane investing during the last season, and even this season, they failed to sell the juice due to lockdown. Though they invested all their savings, they didn't earn a penny in this season on last year. Uh, one could realize the plight of the vendors. It's uh, just an example. All the vendors have been uh, experiencing such situation for last one year. Uh, they should be, if they should be provided some financial support or low interest loan so that they can be restart 
their business and support their families. Uh, now I'm coming to the second point that is work security. Uh, there is no in uh, pandemic ha has hit the vendors hard I mean risk of getting infection and it is widely known that many vendors are also getting infected. Uh, there is a need to make the vendors aware on how they could protect themselves along with doing their work. Moreover, adequate safety gears, including masks, gloves, sanitizer, should be provided to them. Besides, there, uh, besides, there is a um, need to improve the working conditions where the norm of social distancing is thrown to in every day. A dedicated team should work to make them aware and help them get safety gears. Otherwise, we'll invite a big problem in the day to come. Uh, in social security, uh, I want to focus the greater need to enhance the social security of the street vendors. Uh, the center of attention of social security is to enhance and protect people's capabilities to be adequately nurtured, to avoid escapable morbidity and preventable mortality. We should think of preparing a roadmap to ensure security towards self-employment, uh, wage employment, and uh, provision for basic needs such as food, health, and education especially for unorganized sector workers. Uh, as their uh, working condition put them into risk of getting infected, they should be treated as frontline workers and government should uh, create a dedicated isolation facility for them. Moreover, government should also think of vaccinating them in a special drive. Uh, the registration of the street vendors is going on due to non-registration. Last year, many street vendors were debited from getting social benefits during lockdown last year. Uh, a universal plan could be mooted to make an effort to ensure that all the street vendors get social benefits. Uh, many street vendors who are migrant uh, are unable to pay the rent of the houses as their economic condition has been hit due to the pandemic. And there is an urgent need to provide the street vendors with public housing and seasonal migrant with the public rental houses. Uh, the union of the street vendors also should be encouraged to participate in the decision making. And it is essential to conceive uh, a design of the market, use the open spaces where we can adequate avenue to maintain social distancing, moreover regular sanitization of the market uh, should be conducted. Uh, this apart, the vendor should be provided with uh, mask, sanitizer, glove, and other safety equipments. Sanitation is also an important aspect which should be given utmost importance in this period of crisis. The waste management should be done properly and safe drinking water should be provided to the vendors in the marketplace as well as at the home. Also, the pension of health security scheme need to be uh, pension and health security scheme need to be ensured for the street vendors. Uh, moreover, the government should also check out the plan so their street vendor could do online business through cooperatives uh, by strengthening the livelihood of vendors. We could uh, strengthen the livelihood of entire supply chain. Uh, the primary source of production of street vendors are small and marginal farmers. 
besides micro and small industries by strengthening the livelihood of vendors and ensuring good working atmosphere for them we could also strengthen the financial condition of farmers and micro and small industries which supply their produces to the street vendors uh, uh, thank you very much for patiently hearing me on the issues that need attention of government thank you once again uh, thank you ms santi i think uh, you made some very clear points the yeah. importance and the needs of how uh, to get this um, yeah. uh, government's policy also to support street vendors uh, and fresh market, particularly because uh, we need to also realize that street vendors is not a crime and it is part of a very important, uh, you know, uh, it plays a very important role in, in the economy. Um, thank you very much. So the last I would like also to invite uh, Estianto Arivibowo from Sekolah Pasar Indonesia because um, like uh, in the beginning we heard the traders have shared some of their initiative that uh, that they've done as a cooperative uh, and, and uh, setting up online uh, distributions for, for fresh market uh, apart from the existing e-commerce industry aside that's being uh, really taking over the place uh, but this is a really an initiative from from the fresh market uh, uh, Santo yeah, the floor is yours. Yeah. Terima kasih, Mbak Kartini. Thank you very much, Mbak Kartini. Very good afternoon, oh, my dear colleague. Introduce myself. My name is Anto from Sekolah Pasar. Sekolah Pasar is trying to provide assistance, training, research about traditional market. In Indonesia, we call it traditional market. And in other countries, or international market, uh, we call it a wet market. And then we are at Skola Pasar, we're trying to formulate and try to reflect. The first one is that we're trying to strengthen the aspect of human resources. How is the vendors feel like they have the capability to develop their own market? and then to manage their own market. Because in many times, we see that the vendors did not know about the mark history of the market when they sell their product. So it will be hampered the uh, development of traditional market. And then after that, after observing the human resources, we are moving to uh, capacity building in the midst of the vendors, among the vendors. Because as we know that the strength of the vendor is de depend on the amount of the people, it's different with the cap capital owners. and the human resources. So we need to invite them to build the collectivity to, to establish this market and develop this market. And then after that, we're moving to develop the capacity, build the capacity. That is three things, the human resources, and then the institutional, and then the business. And we have a dream actually about how is the traditional market able to be managed by the vendors collectively? And that is our dreams, actually. And then the pandemic of COVID-19 actually show the real face of powers, how they show us which side they're on, whether they're in the side of the private sectors or the people um, side, because the state, they need to pick a side who are they're siding for. 
But then we have a little bit of experience that the COVID-19 pandemic also provide us a very great learning experience to develop the last aspect, which is the business development. And then we are in two markets. We're going to establish a marketplace, the Sambaligi market, so that you can see that the Sambaligi ID and then also Colombo market. So we it's available on the website. And we built a marketplace by involving the participations from the uh, associations of vendor associations. And also the in Colombo, we also participate with the uh, traders uh, organizations. We are trying to develop a very simple platform that is managed and organized by the vendors. And then in Sambilagi, it is managed by Ibu Naima Tulwardia, our previous speaker, develop the products and then also receive the uh, orders, communicate with the customer, and even she's become the career sending those uh, food products. So that's why we're trying to develop the marketplace for the traditional market. And all of that is organized by our colleague, a vendor colleague. And then to answer the questions from the community, whether is it true the conditions of vendors in the market, they are considered to not have the capacity or able to manage the infrastructures of technology. That is quite difficult. But then after we do trial in both market, we found out they're actually the vendor have the ability to do so. And in sep in, we also held the survey from customer and the response of customers are very good. They're satisfied by the performance of both markets. And then they're very satisfied with the services and also the product that they order. It still have a good quality and it's still fresh. And then it proves us that whether the community or the vendors that is the vendors or people in the market communities are always looked down or underestimated. They actually have a great capability in doing that. Uh, we also want to share a small stories about the marketplace services managed by big companies. There's some of the customer actually complain about the quality of product that they send. And the, the customer consider that the product, let's say fruits and vegetable, is not as good when compared to when they go directly to the market. And then the career hired by big companies with maybe with a very low income and paycheck. And then the customer trying to get the a product as soon as possible. Maybe the career is also not have the ability to pick the fresh product for the customer. And up until now, that is our, um, our learning lessons. And one more time, it is proof that the capability of vendors in managing and organizing something that is at the long time is underestimated by people that the, the vendors able to do that. And the key is, I don't know, maybe other places like Thailand in India, I think that what you can try is that this is my proposal. When we build things with collectively, we can be able to build a platform managed collectively by the vendors. And I think it'll become a solution, at least during the pandemic period, how the customers are still safe and also the vendors are safe because we consider that in Indonesia, as much as customer behavioral change who are using online uh, marketplace, 
we can also capture that opportunity for the wet market actors. And as we know that a supermarket and mini market, it's very hard for us to, com to compete with them. And then those who are actually violate the rule still able to do their business. And as we know that there's a lot of marketplace managed by big corporations. And when we, if we are not slowly adapt with the change of technology, I don't know until when the wet markets can survive. And also the marketplace can bridge two type of customers. The first one is that the elder, because due to COVID, they have a high vulnerability of the virus spread. And the second one is that the working women, actually the group of working women still have a great willingness to shop on the wet market. So what we can do is that we can deliver the product to where they work at. Because even though they have a big willingness to shop in the wet market, uh, the after hour after the uh, women's working times are over, and then the wet market is already closed. So that's why we're offering them to bring or to give a delivery to their workplace. And I think that's all from me. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Masanto. Uh, some people are asking about the English translations for Hindi. It's in the Korean uh, channel of the Zoom interpretations. For those who just uh, join us late, uh, there are interpretations to English for Hindi, Thai, and Indonesia. Uh, using the Zoom interpretations um, uh, device. And there's the little tools in, at the bottom of your Zoom. Thank you. Um, and I think what uh, Santo is saying is, it is also uh, um, highlighting the importance of how we uh, coordinate between street vendors and fresh market that often see as unorganized, but many of the groups who uh, participate here actually start doing that. Um, and I think it is why, uh, you know, it's uh, an important part of, of bringing our proposals to the table is by true organ, uh, organized among the street vendors and, and fresh market. Um, also, um, the fact that e-commerce uh, has grown is really uh, how we can think of alternative ways of these online um, distributions that not using the e-commerce that are being built you know, by big industries but initiatives coming using independent open platform uh, that are as um, simple and can be managed by the vendors is not possible. It's not, it's not something impossible. I mean, it is something that we, uh, the groups like in Georgia have, have been doing. So there are initiatives out there that, that starts to, to show how we can also you know, deal with, with this invasions of, of e-commerce from big industry. Um, uh, we have uh, 15 minutes, 15 more minutes for open forum. If people want, I see raising hands, um, Afsar Jafri, um, go ahead if you want to. Um. Thank you, Kartini. Uh, in yeah, uh, thanks uh, to all the you know speakers. In fact, I just like to uh, highlight uh, two issues here uh, uh, related to one is related to the uh, unfair regulation, uh, which uh, you know speakers have highlighted. One thing which I have noticed in my neighborhood and in my you know in the, in the especially the you know in the daily where I live, daily NCR region. You know, uh, it is not only the government which is doing unfair uh, regulation or trying, you know, 
in fact uh, they are uh, badly or uh, unfairly treating the uh, hawkers but it is also the consumers i have seen uh, you know in the localities especially in the gated localities where uh, consume i mean the hawkers are not being allowed to enter and uh, you know supply or uh, sell their stuff but at the same time the e-commerce or the retail firms uh, whether it's uh, grofers or whatever you know flipkart or walmart or amazon their uh, you know boys can easily enter and there are news reports which shows that you know they are the ones who are sometimes responsible for spreading you know covid to the residents but at the same time the the poor hawkers are not allowed to enter in those societies in those gated communities this is one aspect the other aspect which i would like to highlight is uh, basically you know the the payment system because we have noticed in india there is a latest report by uh, jp morgan which uh, you know which came out i think in in march 2021 which shows that there is exponential growth in the e-commerce in india which uh, basically jumped from 38.5 billion dollar of value to uh, in in 2017 to 61.1 billion dollar of value in 2019 and uh, there is uh, there is a you know expect expectation that it is it will go up to uh, you know uh, uh, 62.7 billion dollar in 2023 but at the same time it is also showing that the online bill payment is also increasing and it has increased to uh, you know from 55% in 2019 to 72.5% in 2021 so this is the kind of exponential increase we are seeing in the online payment and it it also shows that the payment through card as well as through uh, you know digital wallet is almost uh, it was around 60% in 2019 which is expected to increase to 70% in 2023 23 so i just want to uh, you know ask uh, especially some of the organizations uh, hawkers organization the part of this forum today that what steps are being taken by the hawk uh, hawkers organization to you know augment the online payment or at least cashless payment uh, which at least give some kind of uh, safety uh, you know uh, consideration to the consumer because under this covid situation people are not interested and they don't like to deal too much into cash dealing so is there any plan for uh, you know uh, shifting to online payment by the hog i mean if the, for example some of the hawkers in india we have seen i mean even on the cart they are whether they are selling banana or they are selling vegetables they have pay tms they have other uh, google pay and all so uh, what steps are being taken for the uh, by the organizations to make this uh, uh, to popularize this among the hawkers so that they start uh, you know dealing cashless with the consumers thank you uh thank you afsar i think that highlights um, also a very important questions because many of these cashless payment are still being managed by uh, big corporations um you know if you see pay tm and other it often linked to um to sort of um, you know big corporations who manage that and the fact that many of the street vendors and fresh uh, traders even do not have bank account often um you know that that is the problem uh, and so i think that that sort of link to um, um the first questions um uh, that was in the, in the the session where we tun says about tackling the corporate power that control food system because it's not just on directly the distributions but as well as on the financial side and this payment so i don't that's a big questions uh i think uh if, i don't know if anyone from the floor or some of the speakers want to to share their their opinions uh about these questions um 
I know maybe Mas Anto from Skola Pasar, um, you can also talk a little bit about how the payment is being doing through this platform that is managed by um, by the vendors. Uh, maybe that can help a little uh, with this. Hello. Kartini. Ya. Yeah. Oh, maaf saya videonya on off. Oh iya enggak so, apa-apa. Yes. Thank you very much Kartini. Sorry for video for on off video. Based on our experience actually. The first thing that we need to understand is that how to create the awareness among the vendors. because they have the same fate and they have the same experience and then togetherness in doing this. And I feel, I think the first step that we're trying to do is that we're trying to, we're trying to create the uh, awareness from the street vendors and from the hawkers. And then we try to create awareness by telling them that we have the same interests. And then after that, the vendors colleague need an organization to become the platform and where we can design and then we can plan things that we can work on together and then one more time our faith is that the power of the uh, vendors and the hawkers is that the amount of the people because the more people that we can invite and join in togetherness and then after that we can do many things actually so one community on each wet market it's impossible for them to compete with the big corporations of course they're going to be loose at sight but then in Indonesia, we have 12, 12 millions of vendors in Indonesia on the wet markets. And we can imagine how much of the great power if we can invite all of them and we can utilize our, all of our ability to build something that we can use as a tool to defeat the big corporations. So there's a lot of things that we can do from there if we have the power of human resources. So if we recognize our power, that is the thing that we need to empower actually. If we rely on the financial power, we cannot move and we cannot move on. And then we cannot able to unlock the ability of the vendors. So we know that the amount of the people and then the human resources, that's become the key power. And from there, we can develop together. That's all, Kartini. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that's sort of uh, important in, in the point that Afsar was highlighting in the beginning, how sometimes unfairness not just coming from uh, the government's policy but also from sometimes our ignorance you know consumers ignorance uh, about uh, this uh, the situations and 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 i think public educations and building awareness is also an important part um, integral part in how we can support uh, street vendors um, i think one one point that uh, maybe i could add a little bit on the questions on 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 tackling this um, this corporate power is um, the questions and the importance of of rebuild public food system and rebuild public uh, food uh, distributions that uh, of over the years it has been diminished a lot because of you know regulations and how 
governments are taking sides to support more of this private uh, private uh, market um, and and create and that's why in, in in many places also even fresh market are not allowed to operate um, only or only allowed like once a week and something you have this weekly market but I think we need to reinvent and reinforce um, public and community controlled market uh, from the local level up and um, the COVID pandemic shows how important it is uh, and building trust, you know, if if communities around that area know who are selling, you know, uh, the food that they consume or produce that products that they they need day to day, I think that that is also an important part of building that that trust and and understanding of, of the situations um, of the defenders and, and, the, and the market. Uh, maybe the uh, others from the floor want to make comments. Uh, I think the, the questions of, of of this privatized market has been um, a very important case in India in recent year. I see Dharmendra, you raised your hand. Go ahead. Harminder, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Now we can hear you. Yes. Now, now we can't. No, we cannot hear you, Harminder. We cannot hear you again. I think your mic is not properly connected. Just check your mic. Hello. Yes, now we can hear you. OK, uh, sorry for the mess. <laughs> I completely agree with what Apsar was saying. Uh, in Delhi, we saw gated communities, you know, banning street vendors coming to their colonies. And we, in fact, also filed a case in the court against this extra constitutional power being exercised by residents, citizens in general. And we also saw some incidents of communalizing the disease. And uh, in many cases, we saw people blaming a particular community of street vendors following a particular religion for spreading the disease. So we really had to fight uh, at various fronts. Uh, on e-commerce, I would say that Apsar rightly uh, pointed out that India is the largest uh, growing e-commerce market. And at the peak of the lockdown, when e-commerce was even not allowed to operate, it was the street vendors, it was traditional provisionals, uh, which were serving the people. And basically the trust, the linkage, the relationship that street vendors were having with the you know, neighborhood farmers of around cities, that had helped the communities to procure essentials of fruits and vegetables at the peak of the market. So the pandemic also highlighted to some extent the importance of street vendors and traditional provisioning. And we need to build on that. And on... Uh, 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 I think using technology for payments, uh, uh, we have been partnering with some payment uh, gateways uh, and we have been you know, doing some financial inclusion literacy and many of the street vendors, uh, at least in cities across India, are now going digital. So that's a good way forward. But we, we still have to build a cooperative uh, which can channelize this into one and somehow not uh, to outcompete, but uh, at least to compete with uh, uh, multinationals. So we have a, a way forward, but we need to travel to that far. Thank you, Kartini. Thank you, Dharmendra. I think that this really still an effort to do, to, be, uh, to organize street vendors and, and fresh market in, in many places. Uh, I think it's, it's a hard work, a long work. I remember we had the, discussions years ago when in some places there's not even you know uh, organized street vendors and and, and and fresh market so um 
there's many initiative has been has been done over the years. I think we need to increase that work because, especially in the conditions in a, this very um, weird conditions, weird time that we are living in with, with the pandemic, but also um, and showing that you know this um, uh, that the role of, of fresh market, the role of street vendors are, are very important. Um, uh, Vitun, you raise your hand, so go ahead. We have a few uh, more minutes before we have to close uh, the sessions. Go ahead, Vitun. Okay, yes. I, I think uh, uh, there are uh, three or four uh, 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 points that were important to explain the real value of local market or, or the small food and fresh mobile, uh, mobile market or food truck, mm. food and fresh uh, 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 truck. Uh -huh. um, the first one that uh, we have in survey that we found that the, the pesticide residue in the fresh a product uh, from a uh, local market is better than, than from a uh, modern trade. Mm. The, the second is that the, uh, the price is, uh, is more cheap uh, compared to the product from, from the modern trade. And normally it's a cheaper around uh, four times. Four times, four times. Uh -huh. Yes. And the, the third is that uh, in terms of uh, the diversity of product, like vegetable uh, species or what is it more diversity. Uh -huh. So I think it's uh, three real value that can add to the uh, the of the uh, the trusted economy. Uh, yeah. So thank you. Thanks, Vitun. Yes, highlighting the healthy aspect. Uh, we often see says you know media and public opinion says that fresh market is unhealthy. Meanwhile, a lot of fi findings shows uh, you know fruits and vegetables are being that being sold in in the supermarket actually contains a higher pesticide residues than what it's find in the fresh market. So um, it, it's another as aspect shows that fresh market is actually a lot healthier and yes, cheap and that helps with a lot of you know urban poor community, particularly to access food and and, and vegetables. Um, I saw one more hand was raised earlier, uh, but no longer anymore. Um, if not, I think this has been, oh, Sanjeev Mali, uh, you pressed your hand several times uh, before, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Sanjeev, uh, with, uh, I'm working with Jen for Health. And uh, from the last uh, lockdowns onwards, I have been working with a state vendor uh, while I get opportunity to visit them on the field. I have some experience and uh, I do agree with Officer Sar and Dharmandar Sar and Santiji. They have discussed so many things. And uh, I do have some, uh, I, even I have seen in my naked eyes the situation with the state vendor. So I would like to say some few things like, you know, uh, when the COVID-19, this pandemic uh, started and the government government uh, seen the situation of the state vendor and the government uh, uh, declared the, uh, some scheme for the you know, providing 10,000 as a loan. That's what I would like to highlight here because uh, uh, the vendors who have registered and they will be getting this benefit. But till now, uh, our journal and we team, we work in the on the grassroots level and more than uh, 1,000, more than 1,000, we have uh, helped the vendors to register and get uh, some documents from 
government that is called lor letter of recommendation by the urban local body so through that letter uh, government provide their loan but uh, uh, some some of them they were saying like you know cash payment and some uh, uh, benefit like you know uh, uh, like uh, cash payment uh, cash return back so many benefit will be there but uh, uh, after uh, uh, getting that uh, loan uh, so many people uh, currently i work from uh, home and uh, i am currently not uh, in delhi i am just uh, uh, for a few uh, for few months i return back to my native place orissa and village area i see here the situation also but uh, you know the people who got that uh, pradhan mantri uh, swanidhi loan and the people while i used to call them and i still i have been calling them and counseling them if is there anyone going through any uh, painful situation in this pandemic and uh, they are saying that uh, even government uh, providing some uh, 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 groceries and uh, so many things but uh, you know we people we have been whatever we had and we have saved in our bank that already we have spent even we just uh, we were hoping that the government will be you know supporting us like uh, some uh, relief uh, uh, some uh, some uh, uh, some monies for our uh, uh, economical uh, condition but the government only gave only loan that has to return back at the same time if it, uh, government again the second wave of this pandemic and the people have received the loan but uh, at the same time they have to return back the interest uh, per month uh, uh, 700 800 and 1000 and more also that is in different bank issues so at the same time people are you know just worried about whatever they have that is also finished and the work is already uh, not allowed to go to do the bending activity in the streets and the situation is there very dangerous and they are not earning they have uh, you know some essential need like you know uh, cooking fuel like medicine and uh, protein uh, foods and all whatever they needed and wh from where they will get at the same time when government is you know asking they have to return back interest so this is what happening in the people who have uh, uh, got the uh, uh, letter of recommendation document from government and uh, through that who have uh, uh, received the loan this is what the situation in the ground level at the same time when i return back to my native place and i see here the people uh, almost uh, i could say that almost 100% and that uh, loan uh, Pr pradhan mantri a Swanity loan scheme is only implemented in the city's area. The people who are uh, uh, in the uh, village areas and people are coming from 10 to 12, 20 kilometers far away, they are uh, early morning, they are coming by walking and selling bananas and vegetables. While I meet them, I talk to them. Have you received Sorry. any government scheme, any facilities? Okay. Sure. So this is what uh, they are saying. We have not received any uh, facilities in our village areas. There is no any facility uh, provided by uh, government in our side. This is what people are struggling when I visit uh, in the grass uh, village areas and the whatever I shared in the uh, city's area. That's what um, uh, from my uh, experience. And thank you for so, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you, Sanjeev. Um, we unfortunately, I uh, don't see any more um, raising hand and we've passed our two hours. It's a very rich uh, discussions. Uh, I think this is, it is part of our uh, long time um, work also, uh, everyone here uh, to continue build collective struggles and solidarity for uh, creations of public spaces and conditions that adequately support fresh market and street vendors um, in in many places in the in, in our region particularly because in asia this is something that is still very uh very uh important source of economy and and livelihood and so um I would like to thank everyone for the participations, for your input, insight, and uh, and comments. And hopefully, this could uh, be to you know we could uh, work more uh, collectively in the future. 
um, we will share the, the record to those who are listed in the re registrations. And um, we'll also uh, we'll put down some notes from the from the two sessions. And so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Biotai, Hawkers Joint Action Federa uh, Federation, and Scuola Pasar, and everyone who participated in today's discussions. It's been a pleasure, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Maybe we can have a, a, quick, a quick group photo before uh, if everyone can yeah. tur turn on your uh, your camera. Thank you. <laughs> we can try to do uh, yeah. a quick yeah. group photos. Uh, so if you can turn on your, your cameras. Um, <laughs> So one, two, three, I make a print screen of everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much. So we'll see in the next uh, session sometimes in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kasi. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.